I'm Don Dixon and I want to thank you for joining me again today. We're wrapping up our discussion on the basic movements of fish. We basically covered the deepest water in the lake, home of the fish, deepest water in the lake. Also, we covered uh, the deepest water in an area of a lake. Separate fishing hole. That's what it is. It's a lake within the lake. Now, some of the different lake types uh, and areas, geographical locations around the country, certain type of lakes and sloughs and canals and so on and so forth. There's some little things that we have to talk about to really have a total knowledge of this sanctuary for the fish. Uh, but in the case of the deepest water available, I like to use Florida because it's the real uh, uh, example of what the heck that means. Most of the lakes in Florida are just shallow saucer type lakes, relatively shallow. Uh, this particular lake has some 25 feet, Lake Eustace. Uh, over in uh, Harris, I believe there's still some, there's some 30 feet water over there. Big long stretches of 30 foot water. So, but it's a little bit different than most Florida fish. Uh, most of the lakes in Florida are relatively shallow. The very first lake I fished with, with Buck Orange Lake. Uh, unfortunately, they drained that thing. Somehow it drained almost all the water out of it, I understand. I just found this out not just recently, uh, about 10 years ago. I wasn't aware of it. And they told me that it's been filling back up and it's just about back to where it was. But when we fish it, I'm going to show, in fact, I'm going to pull up on Navionics and show you a picture of Orange Lake. Uh, this is what it shows today. So they're showing in this deep water slot that I want to point out to you. That's where Buck and I caught all those fish the first day I met them. But at that time, that slot was 17 feet deep. And if you look around that slot, there's no grass. There wasn't uh, any lily pads out there. It was all just open water. Now, this is one of the things that needs to really be clarified, especially if you're living in Florida and doing the fishing around here like I am. Uh, a lot of the lakes... Uh, are shallow, but they almost every one of them have some form of slot or little deeper water area, which becomes the deepest water available. Now, in all Buck's teachings, he used to always say, if you have 20 feet of water or deeper in the lake, the fish will always take the deep water as their home area. But if it's shallower than that, it didn't really give the right sanctuary to the fish, not quite deep enough, and so on and so forth. So he always liked it to be 20 feet or deeper. But he in Florida, one of the best bass lakes I ever fished, the deepest water in the lake was 14 feet. I'm not kidding you. We're out in the middle of the lake fishing an 11 and a half foot break line. 11 and a half to 12 and then gradually slopes into 14 feet. All the fish were strung along that 11 and a half foot break line. Six inch break line, I'm not kidding you. And the deepest water, the deepest water in the lake was 14 feet. Deepest water available. But that 14 foot slot of water, which ran for about two miles, it was surrounded by seven, eight, nine foot flats. There was no grass. There was no other form of cover, any other form of sanctuary, but yet the fish still took the 14 foot slot. It was their best bet, as it were. That gave them some sanctuary from the environment. So in Florida, if I see a lake that's bunch of six and five, four, five, six, seven foot flats. And all of a sudden, out in the middle, there's 14, 15, 16 feet. There's my fish. There are my fish right there. We talked earlier last summer about fishing one-sided bars in Florida, running a break line next to the, to the slot of water, which I already know is the home of the fish. I can look at a, a, a map of Florida and point to every lake and say, there's my fish. There they are. 
And in this case, those deep water slots, which aren't really deep, and they're not prime, they're not 20 feet or deeper, which we'd like them to be, but if they're 15 and 16 and 17 foot holes and slots, there are my fish in Florida. Deepest water available in Acacia Orange Lake. That 17 foot slot was the deepest water available. And guess what? It was also the deepest water in the lake. It was the deepest water in an area of a lake. You see, it can all come together. It can be the deepest water in a lake, deepest water in an area of a lake, deepest water available. It can be all the same spot. So I want this to all start coming together for you. One thing we know for sure, deep water is a home of the fish. While I'm talking about Florida, I'm going to show you a couple of other little figures here. This first little drawing here shows shows what could be a shallow area of your lake. It could be just a shallow lake that you fish. Uh, and it has weeds growing down to about eight feet. Could be a slough, could be a canal, something like that. Growing on both sides, almost all the way down to the deepest water in the lake or, or the slough or the canal, whatever it is. And that deepest water is eight feet. Eight feet still the shallows. In this case, as you can see where we have positioned the fish there, they're up in the grass. They're taking the cover because eight feet does not give them any sanctuary from their environment. It's not deep enough. So if we don't have enough depth, the fish will be living in the weeds. Now the funny part about this, if you've ever fished this, I've only encountered this a few times, but when the fish become active in that situation, they come out to the edge of the weeds, to the open water. And then when the activity is over, back into the weeds. It's kind of the opposite of what's normal for us. Something like this, you have to understand that the cover for the fish, it's given them some form of protection from the changing environment. It's not what they like, but they're taking the best of what they have. So if you're fishing something like that, you, you pretty much know you're going to be fishing in the weeds. Now, Here's another drawing, almost the same, except here we put 14 feet in there. The weeds are growing to 14 feet of water. But the deeper water is only a little bit, not much deeper than the 14 foot weeds. But since these weeds are growing to 14 feet and there's not much of appreciable depth beyond that, in this case, the fish would be living in the weeds as well. So if I'm scouting around looking for a really good fishing hole, those last two drawings I showed you, I'm not too interested in that myself. In fact, I'm not interested at all, but if I come across it and I have to be fishing an area like that, I know what to expect. So here again, we're just kind of clarifying this sanctuary zone stuff for you. Where are the fish spending most all their time? In those last two situations, they're spending most of the time in the weeds. Okay, so let's end this discussion now talking about a reservoir. Where are my fish in the reservoir? I've made mention of this prior to, but I'm going to restate it, but then we're going to define it a little bit more. We're always thinking in a man-made reservoir that the home of the fish is the channel, period. So we establish fish in a reservoir, the home of the fish is, is the channel. You can't ever go wrong with that thinking, but let's define it a little bit more and detailed a little bit more. If you take any man-made reservoir, the deepest water in that channel will always be in the area of the dam. And if you want to move up the reservoir towards the headwaters, the further you move up away from the dam, moving towards the headwaters, you're going to have shallower water in the, uh, in the river channel than you had down at the dam. I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you a good example. I just thought of this. I'm going to, I'm going to get my wife to pull up uh, Palm de Terre, where we won that musky, first ever uh, international musky tournament. I've told you all about it. I'm going to show you where we caught those fish, but I'm going to take you on a little journey first. Okay, here's Palm de Terre. It has two arms. One is the, I think it's the Finley Creek. Does it say on there? Finley Creek. The other one is the Palm de Terre River. So two main rivers come together and form this big old reservoir. Now down at the dam, 
there as you can see right there I'm gonna just circle a few spots at the channel we had 85 feet 90 feet I think when I was there I actually saw 100 feet somewhere but it's showing right now 85 90 feet of water down near the dam okay but we hadn't found our water color so we kept moving up the reservoir we kept going towards the headwaters and when we finally got up to this little side feeder stream cut here let me show you it says 50 45 to 51 feet in the river channel but you see down at the dam it's close to 100 feet but up where we caught those fish the, the channel was 50 feet so it's the same channel but it was the deepest water in the area. It's not the deepest water in a lake. It's the deepest water in an area. So no matter where you're fishing in a reservoir, you have to feed off of the main river channel and any major side feed of stream cut or river that joins up with that main channel. There's my fish. Now all I have to do is identify the structure in that area of my lake or my reservoir. So we've kind of concluded our discussion on basic movements, uh, clearing up that deep water sanctuary and trying to explain it in detail. I hope you totally get it now. Uh, so with that being said, thanks for being with me today and like us on Facebook if you would and follow us on Instagram and whatever you do, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done that. So thanks again for being with me today and we'll see you the next time.